Wonderful day to you, our distinguished viewers. We are very delighted to welcome you to another episode of Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. I am Wonola Detayo, the Shaper. Our aim at Women on the Watch is to equip you with proven principles for practical application to your personal growth and relationship development. We're excited to continue sharing valuable insights with you on this development journey. And it is our hope that you find them both inspiring and practical. Once again, thank you so very much for joining us today. We want to appreciate all our partners, our financial partners, our prayer partners, the counselors and mentors that attend to the several questions that come to us. And those of you that have been purchasing our books, we say a very big thank you to you. Those of you that have also connected with us with your questions, with your inquiries, it is because of you that we're here. So we encourage you to please keep them coming. Now, today's discussion is centered on divine speed. What is divine speed? Divine speed is a powerful force that can transform our lives and circumstances in ways that are beyond our human capabilities. By trusting God's supernatural power and guidance, we can experience his divine speed and we can overcome obstacles that would otherwise have seemed insurmountable. Today, our case study will be the story of Elijah and King Ahab. But we shall start by taking our Bible reading. Our Bible reading for today is taken from 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 46. 1 Kings 18 and verse 46. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Shall we pray? Our beloved Redeemer, we thank you. We thank you for another opportunity to study your word and to learn at your feet. Daddy, please accept our thanks and our praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, as we interrogate the subject of divine speed, we ask, O oh God, for everyone under the sound of my voice, that, Lord, you will lay your hand upon each and every one of us, and you will cause us, O oh God, to not just recover lost grounds, but supernaturally to be translated and moved to our next level in destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Our case study is the story of the prophet Elijah according to 1 Kings chapter 18. It had been three years since Elijah prophesied a drought in Israel as a punishment for the people's worship of the God called Baal. The land was dry. The crops were falling, and the people were struggling to find food and water. One day, Elijah received a message from God, telling him to go to King Ahab and tell him to gather all the prophets of Baal and Asherah on Mount Carmel. Elijah obeyed and traveled to see King Ahab, who was surprised to see him. Elijah spoke boldly to the king, telling him that the drought was a result of the people's sins and that the only way to end it was to prove that Yahweh was the one and only true God. Elijah challenged Ahab to a contest on Mount Carmel where he and the prophets of Baal would prepare a sacrifice and the God who answered with fire would be declared the true God. Ahab agreed to the challenge, and Elijah went to Mount Carmel, where he waited for the prophets of Baal to arrive. When they did, 
Elijah addressed the people of Israel and challenged them to choose between Yahweh and Baal. So the prophets of Baal began calling on their God to send fire. They danced around the altar. They cut themselves with knives and shouted at the top of their lungs. But nothing happened. Elijah taunted them, suggesting that Baal might be sleeping or on a journey. The prophets of Baal continued to cry out to their God until evening, but no fire came. Then it was Elijah's turn. He rebuilt the altar of Yahweh, prepared the sacrifice, and drenched it with water. Then he prayed to Yahweh to show that he was the true God. Suddenly, fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and even the water in the trench around the altar. The people fell on their faces and declared that Yahweh was the only true God. Elijah then had the prophets of Baal seized and killed by the brook Kishon. He then told Ahab to go up, eat, and drink because there was a sound of a heavy rain. Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and prayed for rain. He asked his servant to go up and look toward the sea to see if there were signs of rain. The servant looked and saw nothing, so Elijah asked him to go again. This happened seven times. On the seventh time, the servant saw a small cloud rising from the sea, and Elijah knew that it was the sign of rain. He told his servants to tell Ahab to get on his chariot and hurry back to Jezreel before the rain could stop him. A great rainstorm started, and Elijah ran a distance of about 20 miles on feet all the way to Jezreel, and he arrived earlier than Ahab, who was on a chariot of horses. This marked the end of the chapter of drought in the land. It is our earnest prayer that God's hand upon our lives will give us divine speed to catch up on all lost grounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Of all the journeys of life, the journey to marriage is one of the most significant journeys that can make or mar one's destiny. In her book, Pitfalls on the Journey to Marriage, Pastor Wanuola Adeteo provides a treasure trove of godly wisdom and scriptural principles to guide Christians on the journey to a fulfilling and lasting marriage. Wherever you are on the journey to marriage, this book is a manual and reference material with divinely inspired guidance that is certain to help you avoid those dangerous pitfalls that can disrupt your journey to marriage, your marital life, your destiny and ultimately your lot in eternity. Get your copy in print and electronic formats from your favorite online retailer or visit theshapersarc.org slash books to place an order. Welcome back. What an interesting story that highlights how supernatural speed can turn a situation around in the blink of an eye. The prophets of Baal had been praying to their own God all day with nothing to show for it. But when Elijah called on the living God, with the speed of light, fire fell from heaven and consumed the wet sacrifice and even all the water that was around it. Furthermore, the drought of three years, the Lord answered the prayer of Elijah for rain with such speed that Ahab's chariot could not even outrun the rain. In the blink of an eye, a three-year struggle ended with great display of the power of our God that is called Yahweh. As if this was not awe-inspiring enough, the Bible tells us that Elijah, with God's hand upon him, he ran faster than the chariot of Ahab and he reached the gates of Jezreel before Ahab. Can you imagine that? A chariot that was pulled by a team of horses being overtaken by a man running on foot. This display of supernatural speed is a testament 
to God's power and ability to work miracles in our lives. In today's episode that is tagged Divine Speed, we will examine two things. First, we're going to try and get an understanding of what divine acceleration means. And then secondly, we will look at the five keys for divine speed. Let's start by looking at what is divine acceleration. The first thing to note is that divine acceleration is a combination of two words. One word, divine. The second word, acceleration. Divine means something emanating from God. It's not human. Divine emanates from God. Acceleration means an increased rate of speed. When a man is driving a car and he wants to move fast, they will say, press the accelerator. So acceleration means increased rate of speed. This means, therefore, that divine acceleration refers to God's power to bring his plans to pass at a faster rate than humanly possible. It also refers to the application of God's supernatural ability to bring to pass his plans either in our personal lives, in our career lives, in our businesses or finances, or even in our relationships. And he does this at a faster speed than is humanly possible. We can also look at divine acceleration as a way that God uses to help us to recover lost time or to recover lost grounds. We see divine acceleration at work in the story of Elijah and the supernatural way in which he overtook King Ahab's chariot, even though he was on foot. Now, why does anybody need divine acceleration? Why should we aspire or desire divine acceleration? Number one, we need divine acceleration because without God, the speed of man may amount to nothing unless the owner of time and chance chooses to favor you. This is anchored in scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes 9, 11. I returned and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. You see, it was God's hand on Joseph that caused him to mount the throne at the young age of 30 years. He was not the first in his family, but God chose to move him from second to last position to mount the highest position that would ever come to any member of his family. The Bible records that the favor of God, the hand of God was upon Joseph. Genesis 30, 39 and verse 6. Genesis 39 and verse 6 and also Genesis 41 and verse 16. It was God's hand on Joseph that gave him divine acceleration. That in a land where he went as a slave by the age of 30, he had mounted the throne and he was the prime minister. It was God's hand on Daniel that caused him to be 10 times better than the trained astrologers, the certified magicians. God's hand on Daniel made him to excel far above them. You can check it out in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 9. We also see God's hand bringing divine acceleration to the life of Esther, a slave girl in her land of slavery. She was preferred by the king and therefore she became queen in the land of Shushan, in the land of Persia. Check out Esther chapter 2 and verse 17. So we all need divine acceleration. Second, why do you need divine acceleration? Two, because without God, 
the effort of man is a recipe for ultimate failure. It's a recipe for ultimate failure. The Bible says, Psalm 127 verse 1, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. You see, the moment the Spirit of God left Samson, the so-called strong man became helpless in the hands of his enemies and in the hands of his mockers. Indeed, he became a mockery. Check out Judges chapter 16, verses 20 and 21. The moment the Spirit of God left Saul, he journeyed on a downward spiral to his death. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14, and 1 Samuel chapter 28, verses 15 to 19. So without God, man's effort will end up in disaster. Now, the question is who amongst us needs divine acceleration? Who needs divine acceleration? Number one, those whose progress have been held back or those whose progress have been halted by the treachery and envy of others. Joseph was a victim of treachery. He was a victim of envy. And so God determined that, you know what? I'm going to showcase this guy in spite of the envy of the brothers. I am going to make sure that everything that looked like a misstep will just result in divine acceleration. The story of uh, Joseph can be taken or checked out in Genesis 15, uh, Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 and 20. Who needs divine acceleration? Those who are stuck in a long period of waiting. You have been waiting and waiting and waiting for the manifestation of the destined purpose of God. Moses is an example. He waited and waited. But you see, when the time came, the divine acceleration of God still made sure that in his lifetime, he caught up on all lost grounds. Check out the story of Moses in Exodus chapter 3. Who else needs divine acceleration? Those who are fleeing from spiritual oppo opposition due to weariness and strings of victory. Because many a times when we have had victory, first time, second time, third time, we can become weary. It happened in the case of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19. Elijah had performed so many feats for God and all of a sudden he had reached a burnout. And suddenly they said to him, this is what Jezebel said. And he ran. But you see, God still made sure that he took a bit of time to come apart. But then he accelerated him. Who needs divine acceleration? Sometimes those who need divine acceleration are those who are suffering from the consequence of disobedience of sin. If you have disobeyed God, and you now discover that, oh my God, I've messed up. How am I going to fulfill destiny? It happened to Samson in Judges chapter 16, verse 28. A lot of people think Samson did not fulfill destiny. He still fulfilled destiny. He still destroyed, you know, he was the one that had did the greatest disaster to the land of the Philistines. Unfortunately, he chose in his own case to ask to be taken away. But those who need divine acceleration of their destinies are those who sometimes have made a misstep and therefore they need the hand of God to cause them to recover on the lost ground. A fifth category of those who need divine acceleration are those who have gone in the opposite direction of the assignment and their calling. A good example is Jonah. God called Jonah, go to Nineveh, go and do this. Jonah said, eh, me? No way. He ended, he went in the opposite direction. But you see, God just sent a whale to be there to capture him. Don't swallow, don't eat him up. But just, you know, and as he repented, he was still able through the mercies of God to fulfill his destiny. Read Jonah chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, if we are convinced I need divine speed, what do I need to do to attract the attention of heaven to give to me divine speed? There are five keys for divine speed, and they're under the acronym SPEED. Divine key number one is S, service orientation. Divine key number two, P, preparation. Divine key number three, E, expectation. Divine key number four, E, endurance. And lastly, divine key number five, determination. All 
all of these people that we have looked at, you know, showed a number of these uh, five keys in their lives. So let's start with key number one, S, service orientation. You see, supernatural acceleration will often come to those who have hearts of service. Look at Elijah. Elijah had proved himself a servant of God over and over again. Therefore, God worked so many wonders through him, including the divine speed that made him to outrun the chariot of horses. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. So, do you want acceleration, my friend? Do you need divine acceleration? Then you must be a man or a woman of service. As you serve God diligently in your duty post, like Elijah, like Joseph, like Daniel, the hand of God will elevate you to heights and dimensions that you cannot imagine as documented in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4. Key number two, preparation. Supernatural acceleration or divine speed is generally delivered or granted to the prepared. You see, God will not elevate the unprepared. Why? Because they will be promoted beyond their competence. So the fact that God will elevate you and give you victory does not absolve you of your responsibility to prepare yourself. In fact, you see, success is preparation meeting with opportunity. So the mighty victory that Elijah won against all the idolatrous prophets was not an overnight success. It was a result of years of dedication, a years of constantly working with God and learning at God's feet. So when opportunity meets preparation, divine speed is activated. We have what we call five Ps for preparation, and that says proper preparation prevents poor performance. I repeat that, five Ps, proper preparation prevents poor performance. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 30, verse 25, Proverbs 30, verse 25, it says the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. That's why they don't go hungry in the winter. So as you prepare for your day of promotion, as you prepare for the day of divine acceleration, you must engage in learning, engage in praying, engage in planning, so that when the hand, Lord's hand comes upon you, divine and supernatural lifting will be your portion, which takes us to key number three. Key number three is E, expectation. Those who will experience divine acceleration must ex expect opposition. You see, even from those that are closest to them. You see, the prophets of Baal and Jezebel, they opposed Elijah. Joseph's closest brothers opposed his, vis his vision. And in fact, Daniel's colleagues, they plotted against him. Even Saul opposed David's lifting. Even though David was the one serving him, when the madness would come to his head, it was David that would blow the flute. Yet, yet he opposed the lifting of David. Tobiah and Sambalat, they were there to oppose Nehemiah so that he would not be able to rebuild the broken walls of Jerusalem. So the good news, though, is that you will experience divine speed. Why? Because as you expect opposition you know that you are to ignore the voices of the critics and you are to ignore the tantrums of those who are opposing you so that you can then stand firmly on godly principles instead of, mock, instead of moping and wondering, oh, why do they hate me? Why do they dislike me? Why are they, why are they doing this against me? Those who are to experience divine acceleration, they know that opposition is going to come their way and they have prepared themselves mentally and spiritually to not be deterred by opposition. Proverbs 23, 18. Proverbs 23, 18, it says, For surely there is an end and an expectation shall not be cut off. So as you expect opposition, expect that the hand of God is going to lift you far above opposition, which takes us to key 
number four. And key number four is endurance. Endurance, supernatural acceleration or divine speed is usually granted to those who have the ability to withstand hardship. 2 Timothy 2.3, 2 Timothy 2.3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You see, Elijah endured lots of hardships. In fact, he became an outcast in the land of Israel. He was hunted by the king's army because of the prophecy that he gave. Elijah risked Jezebel's wrath and went ahead to kill the prophets of Baal. And he had to run and hide himself. Daniel also endured hardship. He refused to eat the king's meat and make life easier for him. Joseph endured hardship. You know, he refused to take the easy way out and begin to sleep with the wife of his master. You see, if he did that, he would have ended up as the head of slaves. He would never have made, made it to where he was supposed to go. So when all of those tests come, just remember, I need to endure in order that I will still be available when it is God's time to accelerate me divinely. As you endure hardness on your journey to the top, please expect the unseen hand of God to silence all opposition and to lift you to the next level, which takes us to key number five, and that is determination. Divine acceleration often chooses the determined person. Elijah was stubbornly determined to showcase the true uh, uh, God. Ah, and while it may seem as if the world is going upside down, Bible assures us that God will not tempt us beyond uh, providing for us a way of escape. And the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 7 that, you know, God is there to help us so we will not be confounded and we will not be ashamed. So please enjoy the challenge knowing that at the end of the road, the price of a crown awaits you. So today we have discussed divine acceleration. We have looked at what it is. We have looked at who needs it. And we have looked at why we need it. And finally, we have looked at the five keys for divine speed, tagged S-P-E-E-D. Before we end this session, it is important to note, divine acceleration can only come upon you if you are born of God. Anyone who is a sinner, according to Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2, God's hand is not shortened to reach you, but sin separates you. So if you would like to give your life to Jesus so that his hand of acceleration can come upon you, please join me as I pray. Say to God, Heavenly Father, I come before your throne. I hereby confess my sin and I ask that you wash me in the blood of Jesus. Please, Father, come into my heart and I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my Savior. Please write my name in the book of life and give me the grace to live a life that is pleasing in your sight. This I ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. If you have just prayed that prayer with us, please send us a mail on women on the watch testimonies at gmail.com or WhatsApp plus 234-812-402-0538. I want to thank you so very much for joining us on this message. And if you have been blessed by the program, also please connect with us on those numbers and the email address that we have sent to you. I want to invite you to join us again next week as we come up with another scintillating episode of Women on the Watch, powered by the Shapers Act. Until we meet again, I am Wonola Detayo, the Shaper. Shalom. <laughs>